Here is a 40 GB M2 SSD enclosure made by Orico. I'm going to do the unboxing and also the installation of a SSD on this device. Being a 40 GB enclosure, this device is going to have a lot of heat dissipation and this is why Orico has installed a small fan on this PCB board in order to help with the heat dissipation as quickly as possible. My first impression was this enclosure is a little bit larger than the other ones that I have. You can also see on the PCB board it has four keys which means that it can support four different type of SSDs and this is very good. You do not have to buy only one type of SSD. You have access to four types of SSDs that are compatible with this device. On this enclosure, you can install a 2230, 2242, a 2260 and at last a 2280 SSD. So the build quality is very nice. On the front, you have this clear glass which lets you see your SSD and also the fan spinning. In order to get access to the inside of the enclosure, you need to press on it and push up, then remove the top side of the enclosure and you will have access to the PCB board. You will also get a 40 GB cable necessary in order to get access to all the speeds available. On the right, you can see another SSD made by Orico. This one is for iPhones and mobile devices. You can directly record everything on this SSD which attached to the back of your device. So here is another enclosure and I'm going to remove this SSD. This is a 980 Pro made by Samsung and this one is one of the fastest SSD that you can get on the market. Also the enclosure it is coming from is a 10 GB enclosure which is very slow. Here is the thermal pad that came inside the box with the 40 GB enclosure. You just need to remove the plastic on the front and on the back and then lay the thermal pad on the new SSD. So you can either do this now or you can do it after you have done the installation of the SSD on the enclosure. So being a 40 GB enclosure, this device is going to at least double the speed that I was getting with the 10 GB enclosure that the 980 Pro came from. For the installation, you just need to insert the SSD at an angle of 30 degrees and then you just attach this small plastic which is going to be the key. Then after you attach the plastic at the end of the SSD, you will need to press on this locking mechanism at the end of the SSD and make sure that it is going inside the PCB board. After that, you just need to turn it 90 degrees to lock everything in place. So the thermal pad is going to increase the heat dissipation of the SSD and yield a better performance. And also inside the box, they did include a heat sink, a metal heat sink, which is this one. You can also add this one on top of the thermal pad. Everything here is going to increase the heat dissipation of the SSD and the fan is going to take everything and push it outside. So currently everything has been installed on this 40 GB enclosure. It is time to test the new device. After connecting the enclosure to your Mac, you will see allow accessory to connect. You need to allow, then you will go inside disk utility application and look at the left side for the new SSD and enclosure. So if your SSD has never been configured, you will need to initialize the SSD. This is something that I'm going to show you a little bit later. So now I'm going to do the speed test on this new enclosure. Since the 980 Pro that is inside this enclosure came out from my old enclosure, a 10 GB enclosure, it is already configured and formatted into APFS and XFAT. So currently I'm testing the APFS side of this 980 Pro and you can see the speeds that you should get if the drive is configured into APFS. Having your enclosure configured or formatted into XFAT is going to be the preferred format if you use multiple devices in order to have access to the inside of your SSD, like using a MacBook, a Windows PC, an Android device, and an iPhone. You will need the device, your enclosure, to be formatted into XFAT if you want to use all those devices with your SSD. The only downside of using the XFAT format is that the speed will drop by 1000. This is what I'm getting currently. You can see the difference in speed when the device is in XFAT and previously the first speed test that I did when it was on the APFS format. So the device does get warm. It is the same as any other SSD that is inside an enclosure, especially a 40 GB enclosure. It is going to create a lot of heat and this is why you have this small fan inside the 
enclosure in order to push all the hot air outside. In terms of long-term performance, having a fan inside the enclosure is going to push all the hot air that is supposed to be trapped if there is no fan on the enclosure. I'm using a MacBook to do this. You need to allow the accessory to connect and after that you need to click on initialize. Once the disk utility application is open, you can see the new SSD or the new enclosure on the left side of the window. So after you have clicked on Realtek RTL, you will see the new SSD and its specifications. I have here 512 GB of SSD memory. On the top right of the screen, you will need to click on erase and you will see this pop-up menu. So simply give a new name to your SSD or your favorite name that you want this SSD to be named. Right below you have the format that you can select. I recommend that you select APFS. This is the preferred format for MacBook and iOS. This is going to give you the most speed as opposed to choosing an XFAT format. The XFAT format is going to be compatible with MacBook, iOS, Android, and Windows. If you plan to use this SSD only with iPhones, you need to have it into APFS. But if you want to use the SSD with iPhones and your Windows PC or Android device, you need to have the format as XFAT. By going with APFS, the reading and writing speed are going to be at the maximum. But if you go with XFAT, you will lose maybe 200 megabytes per second for the reading and writing. So this enclosure being a 10 gigabyte per second enclosure, you're capped at 1000 megabytes per second. So this is why you have a writing speed of 900 and above and also a reading speed of 800 and above. I have tested multiple times the reading and writing speed. It is very consistent, which is what we want with SSDs. 